Hey everybody, it's Comic Crack, and let's look at some 3D comics. Um, I had to read through these this afternoon from my haul today. I'm a huge 3D fan. I love the blue and red glasses 3D comics. Um, I've got quite a few of them. Uh, anytime I see them, no matter what the character is, I, I generally just pick them up. Uh, these three really run the gamut for me as far as what you can do with 3D. So let's take a quick look. Uh, this one is one of the more sought after 3D comics that are out there, this Hollywood 3D. Every time I've seen it, it's been really pricey. Um, this copy wasn't that pricey, especially considering it still had the glasses. I was pretty surprised. Plus then with the discount that I got, you know, I think it turned out to be about a dollar a comic. Um, so this one is very basic, what you're going to get most of the time with 3D comics. Uh, they incorporate some photos as well too, some Jane Mansfield photos that just look alright. So the first story, Love Came Second, uh, art by Joe Kubert. The biggest thing to remember about most of these 3D comics is that they were made uh, just to be a comic. And then later when kind of this Ray Zone and all this 3D craze happened, they started translating some comics into 3D. So it's, a, it's an important thing to keep in mind as you'll see with the rest of these books that um, this wasn't intended to be a 3D comic when it was created, which makes a huge difference. So what you get is you get your basic 3D comic. There's some really great panels um, still. Uh, this one here is pretty great with the rain. Uh, this one here had some nice layers to it, the eyes floating and the heads floating. I thought that was pretty great. Uh, but overall, you just get the, your basic 3D. They try to incorporate some photos too that don't really work. Um, they're not horrible, but uh, they're not fantastic. And here's the photographer, Edgar Bergen, taking 3D photos of Jane Mansfield. So there we go. So we get a basic look at that there, the end of that one. Um, then we jump to Mr. Monster, an Eclipse character, or actually just a character who was in many different comic companies, but his, his kind of comics in Mr. in uh, Eclipse are pretty great, and they use the character for other comics as well in the Eclipse line to present like crime comics or old reprints of horror comics, that sort of thing. Um, like I've got a schlock series, I've got a true crime series as well. So this is where it starts getting interesting because this one was specifically made to be, as they say on the front, 6D. Um, so the other thing that happens with 3D glasses is that every color comic uh, becomes a whole different beast. Uh, a lot of the colors get just more vibrant and some of them have a little more of a metallic look to them and appearance. Um, and a shine, like especially red lettering, usually jumps out really nicely. Um, and so what they did here is they changed the color of his suit to an amazing effect. Because when you're looking at this stuff with the 3D glasses, these pages just absolutely come alive. As like as far as as far as utilizing it to convey like another universe, uh, it's done really fucking well in this one. So he shrinks down, he gets sucked into this alternate universe. And to be honest, I only read this 3D section of it or this 6D section of the comic. I didn't read the first half. I was too excited to get into it. When he gets in there, he discovers a world that has kind of these 3D floating monsters swimming around or fish type monsters swimming around. And those pages look really nice as well. Um, it really works. Sometimes you can't quite discern what where the layers are for this is a good example this page here when you look at it like this it's clear that this creature it has a buzz saw in its mouth uh, it has cut off the the kind of stem of this star when you have the 3d glasses on you're a little unsure which plane this creature lives on it almost looks like is it in front of him is it behind him um, causes a little bit of confusion but you get the gist uh, the doctor's eyes here, his glasses are a really nice color to use. Um, they almost look like, I always call them like bubblegum colors, these kind of almost pastel-y type cover, colors, I guess. 
so all of this pa all of these pages really jump out nicely too as far as having that nice gloss. Um, and just the little bit of use of these 3D creatures in the background is a pretty good thing. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it kind of gives you a good sample of what you can do with 3D if you kind of set your mind to it and want to experiment with it. Uh, so that one worked really well. This photo doesn't work so well. The, there's a lot of separation between these two images. So what ends up happening is your eye kind of jumps a little bit and it, it gets you a little cross-eyed to try to focus on it. This bat type creature here is in focus and he really isn't. Um, so that photo didn't necessarily work. Uh, was there something else in here? No, there wasn't. Nothing else in there. Uh, so a really good effect. But this one, um, I'll tell you right now, if you ever see Merlin Realm in 3D from Blackthorn Publishing, uh, do not hesitate to pick it up. Unfortunately, mine did not come with a pair of glasses, but I just used the Hollywood ones there. This is probably the best 3D comic that I have in my collection. Uh, my mind was blown as I was reading this sucker on many different levels. Um, so again, putting on the 3D glasses right from the get-go and checking out this front cover is just fantastic. Uh, so the deal with this comic was this creator had a story, had this idea for this story about this Merlin type character or an ancestor of Merlin, I think is what it was. He passed it on to a couple of friends of his who were in the comic business and finally was like, that is so weird. You've got to make that into a comic. Better yet, you've got to make that into a 3D comic. So this whole thing was created just to be a 3D comic. Um, as far as I know, I haven't done any searching on this. As far as I know, this is the only thing this character has been in. Um, but holy fuck, man. Seriously, this is an unbelievable book. I mean, just starting out, as I mentioned in the previous video, the haul video, just starting out with this guy's mask, how it always looks like it's dripping, just blows my mind. I think that's a really neat character design. Um, so you get a lot of panels and pages that are set up with these layers just to utilize that 3D. This separation back here uh, is still really nice. It still uh, yields a really nice sharp image. Um, when those two start separating even more, that's when you start running into problems. It only happens once in this book. So we get kind of closer. Um, this page is really nice. This page blew my fucking mind. So he's a wizard and the way that he conjures his goddamn spells is he almost kind of phases out of time and these shapes uh, appear around him in midair that then he decides what spell he's going to use, grabs one of the many shapes around him, bends it and folds it and manipulates it in air to another shape which then he absorbs it turns into magic and he shoots it out his fucking hands um it is the most incredible thing i think i've ever seen here you go there's a sample of it manipulating it putting it in his hand getting the power and then zap uh frying these beasties here uh really such an incredible idea so you get all these shapes floating around and that's apparently each magician in this world has kind of their own way of conjuring spells. This just so happens to be his. This was a really nice panel as well too. I mean, every single page in here of 3D was incredible. This one was really amazing. Uh, this one wasn't bad, it was a little dense. These panels right here were so nice. They really jump off the page. Um, and as does a lot of the text too, to be honest, especially when it comes to different people talking, uh, it really helps. So another amazing page to leave the conversation. He conjures up more shapes, folds, stretches, pulls it apart, pulls apart this rectangle that creates a doorway that takes him from where he was having this conversation back to his lair, uh, kind of something that cuts through time so he can just step through this shape back to his house. It really is an incredible feat. Um, now this is a page, I'm running out of time here. This is a page that happens, like I said, this, these backgrounds are so separated that 
it really makes it hard to focus on these deep backgrounds. Um, I think there was a total of seven layers, seven different layers in this page when I counted it. Um, looked okay for the most part, but those really far back didn't really work. I'm going to cut it there. Um, pick up this book if you see it. Hunt for it. Keep your eyes open for it. Experience this book. This is one hell of a comic. Thanks very much for watching. We'll talk to you.